Now, after solving the problems on simple band break, let us go on to differential band break. Let us take the first question related to differential band break. I'll read what is given here. A band break as shown in figure diagram is given. The brake drum diameter is 40 cm, the diameter of the drum and braking torque is 1500 Nm, braking torque is given. Two ends of the band are attached to the pins on opposite sides of fulcrum. This point is called as the fulcrum and the bend is attached on two opposite sides of the fulcrum. Distances are given 10 cm and 2 cm. So here I'll consider this distance A as 10 cm and this B as 2 cm respectively. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. Angle of contact is 225 degree. That is the angle of lap. And the lever length is 60 cm. Find effort P required. Now we have to calculate how much is the effort P required at the end of this lever. So let us try to write the data for this. Here first we have to write down the type of the brake. Here it is differential band brake. The brake drum diameter is 40 cm. So radius is 20 cm which is 0 0.2 meter. Next, braking torque is 1500 Nm meter. Then it is given, the two ends of the band are attached to the pins on opposite sides of the fulcrum at a distance of 10 cm and 2 cm. So I'll consider the first end attached of the band that is this distance is A. I'll take it as 10 cm. And then B that is 2 cm. Then coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. Angle of contact is 225 degree. This we have to convert it in terms of radians. So multiply by pi divided by 180. Therefore, theta is 3.93 radians. Next, lever length is 60 centimeter. This L is 60 centimeter means it is 0.6 meter. The question is to find how much effort is required P at the end of the lever for braking action. So here we have to calculate how much is the effort required. So let us try to get the solution for this solution. I'll say that assuming anti-clockwise rotation of brake drum here the direction of rotation of the brake drum is not given so we are assuming it to be assuming rotation of brake drum as anti-clockwise because rotation is not given so I am taking it as anti-clockwise we can even consider clockwise moment, both are correct. Now, for anti-clockwise rotation, as we can see when the drum would be rotating in anti-clock direction, belt would be pulled from this end, so this becomes T1 and delivered here, so that is T2. So therefore, when I draw the diagram, it will be Since the belt is pulled from this side, so here we have T1, next this will be T2. The distance 
distances they are given in the question next for anti clock rotation now the question is we have to find out effort p required at the end of the lever so for that we need to take the moments of all forces at the fulcrum but before that we should know t1 and t2 so the first thing would be to calculate t1 and t2 values and that is possible if we have braking torque since braking torque is given by t1 minus t2 into r now here we have braking torque and radius but we don't have the relation of t1 t2 so next next thing will be i'll say that therefore belt tension ratio it is given by t1 upon t2 is equal to e raised to mu theta therefore e raised to mu value is given it is 0.3 theta we have to write it in terms of radian so it is 3.93 therefore i will get this as t1 is equal to 3.25 times of t2 where i had written braking torque i will give it as equation 1 and from where i am getting the belt tension ratio i'll give it as equation number 2 so from equation 2 i'll put the value of t1 in equation number 1 so i'll say that therefore put t1 is equal to 3.25 times of t2 in equation 1 so therefore if i am putting all values in equation 1 braking torque was given in the question it is 1500 is equal to instead of t1 i will write down 3.25 t2 minus t2 into radius of brake drum and this radius is given in the question it is 0.2 meter from this i will get the answer of t2 that is 3.34 into 10 raised to 3 newton next i will put t2 in equation number 2 in equation 2 therefore t1 is equal to 3.25 into t2 t2 is 3.34 into 10 raised to 3 therefore t1 comes out to be 10. into 10 raised to 3 newton now once i have t1 t2 values i can say that to calculate effort i will take moments of all forces about the fulcrum so after this i'll say that therefore taking moments of all forces about the fulcrum is equal to 0 that is for the equilibrium condition so i'll draw the diagram of the brake drum that is a free body diagram now since the rotation i am considering here as anti clockwise so the belt would be pulled it would be pulled from this end that is here i am getting t1 delivered to the other end so here there will be t2 
so this these are the notations for anti clockwise rotation of brake drum now since i am taking moments of all forces about point o that is a fulcrum is equal to 0 clockwise moment will be positive and anti clockwise moment will be negative therefore if i see in the diagram p into l that is positive because it is clockwise next t1 into this distance is a so it is coming out to be anti clockwise so minus t1 into a next t2 is coming clockwise so plus t2 into distance is b is equal to 0 therefore p is equal to t1 into a minus t2 into b upon the length of the lever so therefore p will be equal to t1 value we have calculated just now it is 10.84 10 raised to 3 value of a it is given a is equal to 10 centimeter so if i convert it that becomes 0 0.1 meter minus t2 that was 3.34 into 10 raised to 3 and b is given as 2 centimeter so it is 0 0.02 meter divided by the length of the lever length of the lever is 60 centimeter or you can say 0 0.6 meter so from this i will be getting the value of p which comes out to be 1694.82 newton that is the answer it means for applying brakes we require an effort of 1694.82 newton so this was the question which was asked for the differential band break and we have solved the problem.